It's a weekday, just got off of work and I'm troubleshooting the GTR. I haven't seen many videos, I haven't seen a lot of information online that I find helpful regarding this low oil pressure in the R32 GTRs. So lots of talks out there regarding the GTR, uh, the R32s, the RB26 where the first generation, the first series of RB, uh, well, BNR32, I guess the R32s, GTRs, those first generations of RB26 in those years apparently have a small end on the crankshaft. And what that does is that the oil pumps start failing because that oil pump doesn't have enough grip on that small end of the crankshaft and it starts kind of free spinning and chewing on the uh, on the on the crankshaft basically. So yesterday I took the car out for a spin and I noticed that my my oil pressure gauge on idle once warmed up was almost at basically at zero. Um, this is zero in kilogram per centimeter square centimeter I believe. So K I think it's kg per cm2. I think that it is and what one equals I believe it equals like 14 pounds like psi fortunately I'm not getting one on idle and whenever I floor it or whenever I'm rolling down the street at two three four five thousand rpm even six thousand rpm that I tried yesterday it only goes to two what two equals it equals like I believe not even 30 pounds of uh, psi of uh, oil pressure so what I've done today is that I removed, well, first of all, I, I changed the oil. I did an oil, hot oil flush, changed the filter again. It didn't really improve too, too much, to be honest. Um, it did have a few silver shavings in the oil, but I think it's from me kind of scrubbing and cleaning the oil pan and everything under the car. So I don't think that it's the, that, that there's anything in the oil itself, but I'll show you guys what I've been up to right now so that if any of you folks are having issues with your oil pump or oil pressure, um, this is the oil pressure unit. So, and it's quite difficult, I would say, to find and to get to when you don't know what you're looking for. So it is basically located, if you have the front of the engine, to the right, you have the exhaust and to the left, you have the intake underneath right beside the fuel filter right there it's usually screwed um it's usually screwed and clipped to uh there is the rubber boot i'm not sure if you guys are gonna see it this rubber boot it's clipped to that so what i have done to access it basically was that you have your oil feed line and your oil return lines they're right here I have unplugged these i have unplugged this sensor that clips there to give me enough space to be able to actually grab this guy in the middle as you can see this is a 17 millimeter bolt so i managed to be able to grab it with a smaller ratchet and actually get there and untighten it because they are they are quite uh quite difficult i would say to uh to, to to get a hold of there's no room to be honest you should be able to do it with a longer 17 millimeter wrench but it's probably much better with a uh with a smaller one there's not a lot of space down there and sometimes they are very tight so what i'll be doing now is that i don't have another oil pressure unit and they go for like over a hundred dollars so it's not like on a prelude where i can just order one for 15 bucks get it tomorrow and give it a try so before spending like 150 dollars on a stupid um oil sending unit what i'll be doing is i have a oil um, pressure gauge very cheap one i'll be plugging it into that hole and it doesn't need power or anything like that it's mechanically controlled so i'll start it up and i'll take it for a spin to see if on the mechanical oil pressure gauge i am getting proper psis so fingers crossed because this will mean one thing well this this could mean two things one um oil sending unit that i need to order i already have this one off i know how to put the new one back on quite easy of a job probably 150 dollars two 
complete engine removal and complete engine teardown. The reason why I'm saying that is because we would need to access the oil pump. The oil pump is at the front of the RB26. Many, many people would say just remove the oil pan, remove the, the, well, you know, timing belt, timing gear, oil pan, pull the pump, put the back one on. Sure, sounds easy. Problem on the engines is that you need to remove the transmission so that you can remove the flywheel so you can access the two bolts that are hidden under there that actually hold, hold um, the oil pan in place. So I really hope that we don't have to get there because I don't have a garage. Um, this is definitely not a job to do in the backyard during the winter when there's snow and it's minus 40. So it's stressing me out just a bit. I'll be doing some of those tests. I'll get back to you guys after. I don't even want to talk about what the options are. Let me get the test done and uh, we'll see what oil pressure uh, we get with the new gauge. So this is all we need. It's a basic little oil pressure gauge with a long line. It's in PSI KPA times 100. And this is the little screw in pin that I'll be putting at the location where I have the oil pressure sensor. So it's pretty easy to install. I'll be putting that up and then whenever I drive, I'll just put that on a windshield wiper and take a look at the, take a look at the PSI. So I'll get into screwing this back in and see if uh, we can easily install it and get it started. So the gauge is in, it has been installed. Most of the fittings are just kind of loose there and as you guys can see the wire goes to this it's not it's not really tight because i'm not sure if it's the right size it does like the look like the right size i'm just afraid that it's not the right thread and then i'll strip it so i didn't want to risk it too too much so what i'll do is i'll start up the car and i'll rush to it right away make sure there are no oil leak and no fuel leaks and worst case i'll just shut it off and order another one or whatever we'll take a look There are no major oil leak, there are no fuel leaks, and as you guys can see, I started the car and we are at about 75 psi of oil pressure. Here it is. Oh. So 75. So I'll let it idle, I'll let it warm up and see what it drops to. I think that it should not drop under like 20 psi or something like that then I'll have to take it out for a spin and really see if it's uh, if it's working or not. We're cruising. We're doing this. There you go. We're cruising and we are I'll take it for a little further of a spin, see how it goes. Still getting oil pressure. Here's what we're getting. We are getting about 25 over one bar, like basically like two, two bars or something like that of oil pressure. Let's just make sure that we're not pissing oil in make sure we're not pissing oil we are not so I think we're good so I think that means that the oil pump is good oh yeah it wasn't doing that before it was definitely dropping way below that yesterday we were close to uh, zero on the gauge when the car was warmed up and on idle so I'll shut it off I'll leave everything the way it is right now I will order uh another oil sensor as you guys can see once again this is the little guy that i need if ever or you need if ever it happens 
you can order this one from the R32 GTR or if ever you cannot find this and you want to go to Nissan directly and they're being difficult because um, it's a Japanese car and you're in, your, you're in the US or you're in Canada, um, ask them for the uh, 300ZX, uh, Nissan 300ZX uh, car, same year, it should fit as well. So once again, oil pressure, hope you guys learned something. Uh, I'm very, very happy to be honest that now the car is, car is warmed up and it's still technically, if ever it's showing 25 there, that means I would be at approximately 1.5 on that um, factory JDM uh, gauge, which is good on idle. As soon as you floor it, you should be at a good, I think six, five, six, seven, depending what RPM range you are in. So again, if ever you guys are running into those problems, definitely make sure that you purchase a little uh, mechanical gauge. Uh, this one comes from Canadian Tire, but if you're in the States or anywhere else, you can probably get these at Amazon for like 10 to $15. It takes you half an hour to screw it in, and it, uh, it gets you to diagnose uh, any of the uh, pump oil pressure issue that you might be experiencing. It's gonna save you a lot of trouble as well, because, um, like I said, it's gonna tell you, do you need an oil pump, which is gonna be thousands of dollars because everything you need, or are you good with the simple um, oil pressure switch? The oil pressure switch is a problem in my car. So happy, this is very, very good news, but we're not done. We're not out of the woods with this car. We have a whole bunch of stuff to do on it, as you guys know. Um, they're collection cars and they take a lot of your time and a lot of your money. But anyways, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, Thank you for watching the video. Uh, give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. Make sure that you subscribe if ever you wanna learn more. Um, you'll learn more as I'm learning more and I'll be showing you guys as much as I can. Um, before I go, here is the temperature gauge. It is at temperature, 22 PSI at 1000 RPM. So we're good, thank you very much. Have a good night.